Hello, welcome to the fifth part of my Second Life scripting tutorials. Today we're going to look at the second part of variables, because uh, we were cut short on the last video, I must have been rambling, uh, and we're going to look at variable scope, something called scope. Um, now if you remember, oh, I've switched from the bunny hat to a fedora, so you can tell things are getting quite serious now. <laughs> um, we looked at the last video, we're storing a variable here. Whenever someone touches the print, we figure out uh, the key of the avatar that touched the prim. We store that in a variable called avatar. And then we typecast or we convert from a key to a string. And then we can say that string out in, in public chat. And that all works great and that's lovely. What if I then wanted to uh, say the key of the avatar not when it's being touched but later on in the script, let's say here, um, I'll just pop it here as an, as an example. Now if I save that script, it's going to throw an error. It's going to say, well, hold on, name not defined within scope. This is a scope error. And what it's saying is that the, the avatar variable, this variable here, isn't defined anywhere inside this block of code, inside this event. It's defined somewhere else. And because we're defining it inside an event up here, I can only use it inside this event. So that's called local scope. It's only used locally within the event I've uh, I've assigned it in. Um, so I can say it inside touch start, but I can't use that variable anywhere else. Now I need to use this avatar key here to check the permissions, and I need to use it in another state entirely down here to actually animate the avatar so this is no good local scope is is rubbish for this so in this case I need to define it for global scope and global scope means that I can use the variable anywhere inside my script and that's what I want so I'm going to define this globally I'm going to define it up here now when you're doing global variables you want to do it before your first state is fired and I want to do it up here key avatar. Now I can do, uh, I think I can just end it there and that should work or I can say key avatar equals I can say null key and that means I have no one dancing and that's a useful thing to store um, or I could store an actual key in, in double quotes. I'm going to leave it as null key and that's now a global scope. And when I save changes it's going to throw an error again it's going to say already defined because or <laughs> or not that worked okay um, because I've defined it up here by setting a data type key avatar equals something I shouldn't set it again down here I shouldn't give it the data type again that's almost like redefining the same variable it should have thrown an error and said well hold on I already know I've already got something called avatar, you, you can't give me something else called avatar. And I shouldn't use the key word there. I should just say avatar equals whatever. And this also makes my code easier to read. Um, if I'm reading this block of code here, I come down, I can just see avatar equals blah blah blah. I know then that avatar must have been defined somewhere else. In fact, I know it's a global, and therefore it must have been defined at the very top of my script. So this is now a global variable. It's got global scope, not local scope, and I can use this anywhere in the script. Now if I save changes, that will compile fine, save complete, get my fedora back in view, and now when I touch the prim, it will store my key in the variable avatar. Why hasn't it set it in local chat? because it hasn't fired this event. This event hasn't triggered, therefore nothing is ever said. This block of code doesn't run. Um, and we'll, we'll get onto that later. So that's variable scope. You've got local scope, which is only within a single event. And that's very useful if you, uh, for example, let's say um, avatar equals detected key, and that's global, I want to use that everywhere. If I then want to say thank you zig, I can say llc0 um, and then avatar name, which is a variable I'm going to define locally in here. Now this is a string, avatar name, 
equals, let's see if I can remember this, LL detected username should do the trick, LL, nope, LL detected name. You can see it changes red when it recognises the, the built-in function I'm trying to use, it's turned red. Um, and it wants a nice one, give zero. That's perfect. So it, it will store my name in avatar name and then say it. Yeah, I can say thank you and then I'm going to join with the plus symbol and I'm going to join on the end of that my name. Now if I save changes this should work. Pull up local chat and then touch the prim. Thank you Zero Resident. And that's worked to treat. And what's that done? What that's done is set a local scope variable, a local variable. So I can't use avatar name in any other event or any other state. I can only use it here. And this is great for saving memory and reducing lag and making things run fast. If it's a piece of throwaway data, if it's a bit of data I'm only going to use once and then I don't care about, this is the way to do it with local scope. And in the global scope I use more permanent stuff like a, a, the list of dance animations or the person currently dancing. Those are global things I want to store for a long time. And they will use more memory and they will use up more sim resource and they'll slow down the sim a little bit. But it's essential for the dance ball to work. So there we go, that's variable scope. Um, in the next video I'm going to cover some built-in functions. Let's look at these uh, little red things here. I'm using detected key, detected name, and I'll say, excuse me, these are all built-in functions. Let's look at those in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you find this useful or have any comments, please let me know, and please subscribe for more. Thanks very much.